Rupert and the Old Hat. One day, Rupert Bear was walking home across the moors. As he neared Nutwood, he found himself surrounded by a thick, swirling patch of mist. Soon, Rupert couldn't see where he was going. I hope I'm on the right path, he said, as he crossed a ploughed field. Suddenly, a figure appeared in the mist. Oh, please, cried the little bear. Is this the way to Nutwood Village? Hello, Rupert, answered a squeaky voice. Rupert recognized his friend at once. The voice belonged to Ogmidon, the scarecrow. He lived in a field near Nutwood, so Rupert knew that he was almost home. Odmidod was very pleased to see Rupert. I get so lonely here by myself, he explained. I wish some of the birds would come to see me, but my job is to scare them away. <sighs> he sighed and flopped down to rest. The two friends sat chatting together for a while, and gradually the mist began to clear. Odmidod jumped up with a squeak of alarm. You'll have to go now, Rupert, he said. I mustn't be caught sitting down on the job. So Rupert hurried home, wishing that he could help his lonely friend. As he walked up the garden path, Rupert noticed that the Nutwood birds were behaving very strangely. They darted about in all directions, chirruping at the top of their voices. They all sound so angry, thought Rupert. I wonder why. But when he got indoors, he soon forgot about the lonely scarecrow and the angry birds. Mrs. Bear was sorting out some clothes for the scout's jumble sale. Come and help me, she called. Look at this chuckled Mrs. Bear as she tried on an old hat. Don't I look funny? This was once my smartest hat. Just then, Mr. Bear came in from his work in the garden. Goodness, I'm hungry, he said. I'm glad it's lunchtime. It can't be twelve o'clock already, cried Mrs. Bear, rushing into the kitchen. I didn't hear the cuckoo clock. Mr. Bear checked his watch. It's ten past twelve, he announced. But Rupert hadn't heard the cuckoo clock either. So he went to see if it had stopped. That's odd, thought Rupert as he gazed up at the clock. That is the right time. I wonder if the cuckoo is stuck inside the clock. But when Rupert opened the little door, he got a surprise. The clock was empty, and the cuckoo was nowhere to be seen. Rupert wandered out into the garden, feeling very puzzled. Outside, the birds were still making a terrible noise. They seemed to be flying round and round one particular bush, chattering angrily. Rupert went to have a closer look, but the birds flew away as he came near. In the silence, Rupert heard a frightened voice. Cuckoo, it sobbed. Cuckoo. And there, clinging to a branch, was the clock cuckoo. Oh, I'm so glad you came, cried the clock cuckoo. It's such a long time since I did any flying, I just couldn't go any further. Rupert gently picked up the little bird. Why ever did you leave the clock? He asked. 
I heard two sparrows talking about my cousin," answered the clock cuckoo. "He's a real cuckoo, not a wooden one like me. He's coming to Nutwood soon with his wife. They spend the summer here, but this year the Nutwood birds are going to drive them away." "Why?" asked Rupert. "Because my cousin and his wife." Put their eggs into other birds' nests to hatch out. The Nutwood birds say they won't put up with it any longer," replied the cuckoo. "I must warn them." Rupert carried the clock cuckoo indoors and placed him on the window sill. "I've had an idea," said Rupert. "You stay here and watch for your cousin. I won't be away for long." Rupert ran as fast as he could to Obmidod's ploughed field. Would you like some guests to keep you company all summer? Asked Rupert. That would be lovely," replied the scarecrow, his eyes shining. Then I may be able to help," said Rupert. He waved goodbye, and set off home again. Mummy. Called Rupert when he reached the house. May I have that old hat you were going to give to the jumble sale? Of course," said Mrs. Bear. "But I can't imagine what you will do with it." Rupert fetched the old hat and some safety pins. Suddenly, he heard a frantic call of "cuckoo, cuckoo," from the window sill. My cousin and his wife have just arrived," called the clock cuckoo. "They're hiding in the hedge." "Don't worry," said Rupert. "They'll be safe now." Rupert popped all three cuckoos inside his mummy's hat and took them to meet Obmidod. Then he set to work gathering twigs and bits of straw, which he used to line the old hat. Finally. He pinned the hat inside Odmidod's even older hat, and placed it on the scarecrow's head. It's a nest," cried Mrs. Cuckoo. "A lovely warm nest." "It's your home for the summer," explained Rupert. "Odmidod will make sure that the other birds don't bother you, and in return, you will keep him company." That evening, as Rupert was having his supper. The cuckoo popped out of the clock to tell them all it was seven o'clock. Oh, good," said Mrs. Bear. "The clock is working again." Rupert looked up at the clock cuckoo and smiled. As for the clock cuckoo's cousin and his wife. They had a wonderful summer in Nutwood. None of the other birds dared to try and drive them away, for Odmidod put on his most terrible face to scare them off. And with all that company, Odmidod could never again complain about feeling lonely.